Okay, so before we move on to the program, let me once uh, show you the structures that we had predefined. We have A head, which happens to be uh, you know getting the fields from BKPF table. So from BKPF table, we have all these fields, and this is what we have in A head, and then we have A item in which we have the fields from BSEG table. That's the accounts item table. So we have a couple of fields taken from BSEG here in the item table. So these are the two structures that we have created in SC11 and now going back to our program. So this program happens to be created on that particular data. So we have this data IT underscore DKPF type standard table of ZBA underscore head A head. A head. IT underscore BSEG type standard table of ZBA underscore A item and then we have WA underscore BKPF type ZBA underscore A head WA underscore BSEG type ZBA underscore A item so these are the things that we have and that's it so we are not building the field catalogs in this uh, program so that's okay not to create the field catalogs. It's absolutely fine here. So select options will go into and it's a good coding practice to have at least one select option or parameter to restrict the data. So we have this as Belner for B underscore BKPF hyphen Belner. Then we'll go for select statement. Uh, no, select, select statement for the first screen. So let me take the fields from here, in the A head, and here we have these fields. So I'm copying all these fields from here. You might already know that you know we have to. If you have to select all multiple fields here, you have to click on Control Y, and when you, when you get this Control, when you click on Control Y, this plus symbol appears. Only then that gets recorded. Uh, that it gets copied. So we have these fields here. Okay, so these are the fields that we have here from BKPF into into table IT underscore BKPF where Belner, Belner happens to be the account number so Belner in S underscore Belner now after this we will be calling the function module reuse underscore ALV underscore create underscore display to get the output of this so let's click on this and we are clicking on we are selecting the reuse underscore ALV underscore green underscore display function module in this we are passing passing the main options here first let me uncomment the exporting and also this i underscore structure name happens to be z v a underscore z v a underscore a head as we were discussing in the in, in the in the other session so we always try to give it in a variable and pass that variable name here so if you see here the structure name I underscore structure name happens to be of type dd 0 to l and iPhone tab name. So what we not normally do is we can see the properties of this. So it will have the length of 30 but I will directly give this property here. And now what I will do is I will go ahead and create a variable for this. So the variable would be the variable would be something like this is v underscore v v for variable for structure type dd 0 to tab name that's it now we will go ahead and assign v underscore str v underscore str equal to sy c proc that happens to be the program so instead of writing it here no, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it should be like ZBA 
ZVA underscore A at. Now we would pass and we don't need any inverted quotes right now. We'll give it as V underscore STR. This is normally the general practice that we always follow. Uh, it's a good good practice to have a variable, pass the value to the variable and then give that variable here. Now then comes the output table that is PKPF. We'll pass it directly. And let's first see the output of the first screen. And then we will, we will write the logic for the second screen. I'll go ahead and give them input some input here. Execute. And we get the records and we get the details of the first table, first PKP of data. So PKP of data is coming here. So PKP of data is coming here. Now we have when you click on a particular Bellner number, that Bellner number should details Bellner details should come in the next uh, table. So if, if let's say we have one one. Six. So if you click on this, the uh, one followed by a couple of zeros and six, that data has to come in the second scale. That's the concept that we are focusing on right now in this problem. So for that, we have to go ahead and enable two things here. One is I underscore callback program. I underscore callback program also can be some uh, directly you can write the copy the program name and give it here. But what happens is, let's say, let's say this this program was done by Robert, and uh, I copied Robert's uh, code. If I copy Robert's code, what will, what will happen here is, his program name will come, and I'm copying it into my program. It will fail. Okay. So there are a lot of lot of instabilities which happens. Okay. So that's the reason we normally give this as it's general practice to give SYREPID or SYCPROC. So in this way, you will not have any issue even if you copy it to something else as well. But it's not the that's not the main motive of it. But there are some other uh, elements where we we actually look at the stability of that program. So that's the reason we give it as SYC prop. Now after this, we have to uncomment this i underscore callback user command. So in this, we'll we'll be giving something like okay, what do you want me to give? Some name? Can you say just suggest? Uh, I'll give Robert here and you know um, the reason for me to give your name is because I just want to show you that any name can be fine and the, the main motive here is to have a, a form name and this form name have to be written here at the, at the down below. Now here I need to build a form with name Robert because that was what uh, we created on the top end form. Okay, so the reason I'm giving Robert here, the name of the form is Robert here, is because in the function module I have passed here the i underscore call i underscore callback user command as Robert. I hope you understood this, and here. We mandatorily have to write something like using C like SYU form and D type SLS underscore cell field. This happens to be a standard standard uh, structure. So let me just quickly click on this and take you to the structure. In this structure, the only field that is required for us is tab index. Now by default, it is of like SY tabix and it will store it will store the index number of a particular row index number of a particular row so we'll go ahead with that tab index so when you come back we'll go for read I'm reading the first table read read table 
it underscore dkpf into wa underscore dkpf index this uh, d in d in d also will have that tab index right now because d is taking the properties from self field select I'll copy the field names from the second structure now. The second structure happens to be BA item. from DSCG into table it underscore BSCG this sorry uh, okay. uh, this is for the second screen and uh, BSCG where this where condition is very important and into table it underscore BSCG where Belner equal to this whatever we have read the data so this w underscore bkpf if you observe here what data is getting copied into work area is the a particular line data is coming from internal table to work area and which particular line the line on which you have clicked if you clicked on 15th line then d hyphen tab index becomes 15 and that 15th line data will be copied from internal table to work area that's what we have so now this where belner is equals to w underscore bkpf hyphen bellner that's it so that's it and then we'll be calling the reuse underscore i mean like reuse underscore, uh, reuse underscore lb underscore green underscore display once again and in this we need not pass the all these values we just need to pass the structure name and the internal table name where we have the data because we are not going forward from second screen to third screen if at all if you have to go from second screen to third screen again you have to do the same process for this one as well so now instead of robert i'll be using here callback uh, user command as something like uh, save and this save form has to be created again and there we need to pass so that would be from second to third but we are not doing it right now in this in this project so we'll go ahead with the i underscore structure name and the structure name happens to be z v a underscore a item here we have it underscore bsc and obviously we have to get for inform that's it so let me once again repeat the entire uh, process is here if you can understand this it will be pretty simple the program will be pretty simple the only uh, thing that we need to understand in this entire program is the form robot using c like s where you come d type sls and sql selfie so we need to so this is something which we have to write here for uh, uh, for our selection so we have selecting it that's the reason we are writing it but D type SLS underscore self field happens to be mandatory. In this, we have to go ahead with this and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead with tab index and uh, that's it. Save, save, activate, execute.
So when we click on a particular uh, Bellner number, say I click on 20, then the 20 details will come in the next screen because we have huge number of records and you might have a question here that we have selected the document number as a primary key and I always say that you know primary keys cannot be repeated. Now you can see that uh, they are repeated. So what's the concept behind it? So let me explain you that. That's very important here. So now let's say we have BKPF. Now in this we have three fields as primary keys. Now when we have three keys as a primary keys, you cannot repeat the combination of three. Now what do I mean by that? Let's say I have three keys. Now let's say I have employee number, employee name and department. These all these three are key fields. Then if I have thousand, I have John and I have SAP. Then thousand Kevin SAP can be repeated because Kevin the employee name is changing. Okay, it can be repeated. Now you can say thousand one John SAP. This can be repeated. at least one value should be different out of all this. So the combination of all the three cannot be repeated, but on a single field, if you consider it as a uh, un one particular field like employee number, uh, it can be repeated. Employee name can be repeated, but a combination of all these three cannot be repeated. Hope this is clear for you. Okay, I guess I just wanted to, I somehow just wanted to, uh, you know, explain you this. Okay. That's out of this project. So, I think we are, we are done with this project. So, if you have any questions, you can let me know.